Just when you thought that things could not get worse, it just did. The stock market and the recession definitely did because over the weekend, the S&P 500 dropped a massive three and a half percent. But the reason why it dropped is because of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Every year, the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City hosts a giant meeting of bankers, policymakers, academics, researchers, and economists at that meeting. And there's some pretty big players like members of the European Central Bank, a chairman of the Swiss National Bank, a professor from Harvard, but most importantly, our favorite Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Papa Powell, aka Royal Penguin, who is ready to migrate the heck out of the US because he is so sick and tired of how hard his job is. But in that meeting, which lasted throughout the whole weekend, the economists got together to talk about where they thought the economy was going. In fact, there's a video of Jerome Powell giving his speech, but that video had only 11,000 views, which makes me sad because my new YouTube channel, Don't Sweat It, where we sit in a sauna and just sweat it out and talk about literally anything with zero subscribers got more views than that on my first video, and I don't think it's anywhere near as important, but you should still subscribe. So I'm just gonna assume you did not watch your own Powell's video because you had better things to do, like literally anything. So let me just paraphrase it here. Sharon Powell, the floor is yours. Please come to the podium. This thing on, expect uh, more pain ahead. <laughs> No, it actually was a really good speech, but the most interesting part about it was that before this meeting, the stock market thought of Jerome Powell as what's called very dovish on inflation, meaning very slow to fight it, and he's famous for saying that he would allow the data to lead his decision-making process. But at this meeting, he did not hold back any punches, and he said it like it was. In fact, he gave three lessons that he's learned over the last 50 years from his predecessors that he wants to make sure that he's going to follow through with. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what those lessons are. I wanna help explain what he said about the economy and the pain ahead, and then I'll tell you what happened to asset prices and how this will affect us. So with that said, let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well. Come for the finance and stay for the breakdown. So first, we'll talk about Bitcoin, real estate, and the stock market. Then we'll talk about the Fed's favorite way of measuring inflation, the PCE which is super nerdy stuff. And then we'll talk about what was said inside of this super secret meeting, which actually wasn't secret at all. It's just that no one paid attention to it. But first, let's talk about Bitcoin because its market cap dropped to $385 billion or less than $20,000 per Bitcoin. That's a price level that a lot of investors never thought we'd see again. But as a reminder, if you're a crypto investor, just remember prices could always go way lower than you ever thought possible. So just be very careful. And it's also why I never invest than more than 10% of my net worth at my cost basis because it's extremely risky. Now, when it comes to real estate, mortgage rates on a 30-year fixed home loan have gone up to an average of 5.5%, which is insane. And sellers have become a little crazy because between the week of August 20th and August 25th, the average list price went up 14.4%. But that's also why homes have been sitting an average of four days longer. And new listings have actually decreased 12%, which suggests that sellers wanna wait and see what happens to the market. But nationally speaking, inventory levels have climbed to the highest levels that we've seen since 2009. And that suggests there's gonna be a lot more pain ahead. So if you're in the market to buy a house right now, I would say wait a little longer. And by a little, I mean a lot. Now, as far as the stock market goes though, it's also down a lot thanks to what Jerome Powell said, which is thanks to what's called the PCE, the personal consumption expenditures. I don't know why they give them such fancy names and why couldn't they just call it the price change of the stuff we buy, because that's what it is. Now, remember in June, we set a 40 year record high of of 6.8%. Now, remember, we're always one month behind every time we get the data. So when we got it in June, that was May's data, right? And that's coincidentally when gas prices were extremely expensive. But the most recent PCE reading was 6.4%, which suggests that inflation should finally, hopefully start to come down. But remember, that's also data from July. Now, the bad news is that PCE is still 6.4%, and that means we are very far away from the Fed's target rate of 2%. Now, the even worse news, though, is that inflation, or the PCE, at the end of this year is predicted to reach about 5.2%, so nowhere near the target rate of 2% either. It's not until 2023 when we get to 2.6, and 2024 when we get closer to the Fed's target rate of about 2%. The good news, though, is that it looks as though inflation has already peaked, and the reason the stock market is predicting this is because of the single biggest contributor of inflation, which are gas prices, which we 
you can see are starting to come down. So assuming nothing else changes and gas will continue to go down, inflation should also come down. But that's only a theory and maybe famous last words. So that's what happened to asset prices and inflation. Now let's talk about this super secret banker meeting that happened in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. I've always been fascinated by statistics, so let's talk about that for a second. Because did you know that roughly 70% of the US population does not have a college degree? And yet we're all told that having one is extremely important. But what if I told you that roughly 70% of the world's leading economists are predicting a recession next year? Would you stop investing? Of course not. You should always be investing. In fact, with a possible recession ahead, now more than ever, it's important to put your money to work for you. But with most portfolios flatlining, and yes, even some of the most historically successful funds are all in the red, things are not looking good because we have lost over $13 trillion worth of value in the last eight months alone. So if you're thinking that you can time the market and pick the winners, especially while everything is in the red, well, good luck. But forget luck, you could look at what the world's most successful asset managers are doing. BlackRock just released a bombshell report saying that the portfolio of the future needs to include alternative assets. And Larry Fink, who is the head of BlackRock himself, said that one specific alternative is the new gold. And I'm talking about contemporary art. It has outpaced the S&P 500 by more than double in the last 25 years, and it's a great way to diversify because of its near zero correlation, which means when the stock market goes down in price like it has this year, the price of art may not necessarily have to follow. And more importantly, when inflation is over 3%, it appreciates more than gold, more than real estate, and more than the S&P 500. It's no wonder that Masterworks now has over 500,000 users on their platform because they're helping investors get contemporary art inside of their portfolios at a fraction of the full cost. In fact, to date, they've sold six paintings with an average net return of 29% to their investors, which is huge. That's twice as many paintings sold as compared to March, which is really cool for me to hear because that's when I first started started talking about them. And after all, how often do we get to see the birth of a new fractionalized asset class and become a part of it like this? That's why Masterworks is slammed with investors joining the platform, so there is a wait list, but you could skip it by clicking the link in the description below the video. Thank you, Masterworks, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get back to it. So here's what Jerome Powell said in that super secret meeting. He said, in order to bring inflation down to 2% and stabilize prices, that they'll have to be below trend growth and that we'll see a softening of the labor market. And this is just a fancy way of saying, they will also also bring some pain to households and businesses. This means that people will most likely lose their jobs at some point. He says even though the economy is strong right now, the labor market is way out of balance with far more job openings than there are workers willing to work those jobs. And then he says something that a lot of people are probably thinking right now. A single month's improvement falls far short of what the committee will need to see before we are confident that inflation is moving down. So ultimately here he says the Federal Reserve will continue raising rates as much as they need to, even if it means not printing money a la Super Mario coin block style for quite some time. Then he goes into his top three lessons that he's learned over the last 50 years. And these are actually really interesting. Lesson number one, he says, is that it's his job and by extension, the Federal Reserve's job to keep the economy stable. This is his way of saying, I'm not gonna wait for the government to do their job, I have to do it myself. Now, lesson number two is the game of psychology. This is what economists like to call consumer expectations and it's super fascinating. Check this out. If the public expects that inflation will remain low and stable over time, then absent major shocks, it likely will. Unfortunately, the same is true of expectations of high volatile inflation. And this makes so much sense because if we think prices will go higher, then of course we're gonna spend our money today rather than wait until tomorrow. But ironically, that's the self-fulfilling prophecy of inflation and it's exactly what happened in the 1970s. Now, thankfully right now, the general consensus of the public is that we all think that inflation will come down, which is a good thing, but that's what he says they have to fight and that's why lesson number three is to be persistent about destroying this thought of inflation when we go shopping. So that's their three priorities. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, even though you didn't ask, let me give you my personal thoughts. I'd love to know your thoughts about this because there's kind of two sides to the argument on this one. The first side is of course, Papa Jerome Powell's side, which is just let's increase interest rates, bring demand down and inflation will cool down, right? But on the other side, people like Senator Elizabeth Warren are saying, increasing interest rates does nothing to help the reason why the economy is really suffering in the first place, which is that we have to fix the supply chain problems, right? And by increasing interest rates, all that's doing is putting the economy more at risk and people could lose their jobs, which would be a horrible situation to be in if prices are also especially high. So those are two sides of the argument. Now, this is probably the angriest that we've all ever seen Papa Jerome Powell. It's almost like he was frustrated that the market wasn't taking him seriously enough. But now that he's emphasized 
realize just how strong he's about to get on inflation and he'll increase interest rates no matter what the cost, the market was finally like, okay, fine, we believe you, and the market sold off. Now, this also means that more than likely, when we get the next inflation report, the Consumer Price Index, which will be released on September 13th, regardless of what that number is, the federal funds rate will go up substantially. My money will be betting on at least 0.75%. Now, it could be half a percent, but based on what Jerome Powell has been telling us, managing the average everyday consumer and business person mentality is the number one priority. So he wants to beat us up with a club over the head with those 0.75% increases until we think, okay, inflation's gonna come down. Now for me personally, even though I think I'm right because I follow this stuff religiously because I have a YouTube channel and no one cares other than nerds like me, at the end of the day, I'm not gonna speculate with my portfolio and try to time the market. Even though some people are upset that interest rates on loans are about to become more expensive, chances are stocks, real estate, and crypto will continue going down. So it's very tempting to sell everything and wait. Just remember this chart. There will always be a ton of great sounding reasons to sell your portfolio and wait, but chances are the stock market will recover and you just never know when and for what reason that will happen. So for me, I will continue to reinvest all of my dividend income via the drip method and continue buying the broad market index fund that is the VTI stock. I think the ultimate truth though is that we need to bring the economy back to reality and the longer the Federal Reserve delays the inevitable pain of increasing rates, the worse the economy becomes for us in the future. So for now, I'd brace myself, build a bigger cash position, build a larger emergency fund because you never know what could happen, especially with what's going on overseas. But as far as Jerome Powell is concerned, I think he's doing the right thing, but of course I could be wrong and I'd love to know your thoughts. As always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this link right here. Don't forget to move your crypto offline in a cold storage wallet, but grab the money while it's still there. Don't forget to grab the free stocks, links are down below, and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.